as you said, they have DNA. And so one, yes. of, one of the issues with, uh, as we get older, is that this DNA, because it, their repair and I guess maintenance is not as good. So right. what happens to mitochondrial DNA? So, I mean, why is this system breaking down as, as we get older? Yeah. So, of course, there's been all these theories of mitochondrial aging for 40 years. And people have had all kinds of things where they say, oh, it's ROS or it's, you know, various other things that are causing mitochondrial to, mitochondria to age. But the thing to remember is that the mitochondria itself is rebuilt every 100 days. And so the mitochondrial membrane, it's rebuilt anyway. So it's hard to imagine that that really is the cause of aging. The thing that is eternal, that is not rebuilt, is the mitochondrial DNA. The mitochondrial DNA is a tiny little ring. It's it's, a back, it's similar to a bacterial DNA. Generally, there's about five of them per mitochondria. So they're actually spaced along the inside of the mitochondrial membrane. And they're constantly, and they're tiny. They're 16.5 kilobits of data, kilobases. Whereas our nuclear DNA is eight trillion, eight billion kilobases of data. So obviously the mitochondrial DNA is this in teensy weensy little thing. And all it does is it just runs, as far as we can tell, it just produces a couple key proteins that are really need to be produced inside. Mm -hmm. it, it would be too inefficient. Remember that mitochondria are designed for optimal efficiency. If you're a rabbit and you're running to try to get away from a wolf, you live or you die based on the, the efficiency of your mitochondria. So they are optimized every way possible. And so one of our philosophies is however mitochondria are built right now is probably 99.99% as good as they could be built. They've been so well optimized by nature. So... Um, <clears throat> So you so, looked, so yeah. you were asking about what goes wrong. Yes, so goes the, wrong. those little mitochondrial DNA in there, they're replicating constantly, of course, because it's mitochondria are replicated, the mitochondrial DNA are replicated. And the problem is that as they're replicated, they begin to get transcription errors. That is our theory and quite a few other people now. The DNA itself, the mitochondrial DNA acquires uh, like bad sectors on a hard disk. Okay, <laughs> If you remember the old hard disk where you could look and you could see all the little black dots where the bad, and, mm -hmm. and the computer has to work around all that, right? Well, that's our theory is that there's bad sectors on the mitochondrial DNA because it is such an, an intense environment. It's a factory. It's very hard to do quality control. It's, it's very intense. You know, this is happening it's like a, it's it's hot. It's you know the, you could imagine trying to do something careful when you're inside of a steel mill and there's there's fire everywhere. I mean it's it's a very difficult environment. And so we start out when we're babies. We start out with a huge complement of absolutely perfect mitochondrial DNA, and then as the decades go by, they get more and more and more degraded from these replication errors. And according to our research, by the time you're about 95 years old, they're shot. They just don't, they can't support you anymore. Right. Yeah, actually, we were talking to somebody else who said that the mitochondria actually run like five or seven degrees hotter than the rest That's of the right. body. <laughs> because they are literally burning. They are, as I said, jet turbines. They are, they are steam engines. They are, they're boilers, literally boilers. So. Yeah. They are amazing things. <clears throat> so you you built a clock, or you, or you looked at the rate of DNA of mitochondrial right. DNA degradation, and you built a clock from that. Right. Um, could you talk a little bit about what that what you saw with that? I want to share a screen with the with a, a a diagram, and I'll just show this to you. Okay, yeah, that'd be good. <laughs> okay. So can you see this graph here? Uh, yes, I can see the graph. Great. So what this is, what you're seeing here, is an actual scan 
of mitochondrial DNA. And this is done with what's called long chain PCR, which is a very, it's a very new and very, very accurate way of looking at mitochondrial DNA. Each, this is actually 500 strands of mitochondrial DNA, which are circular, that have been opened up and laid flat from left to right. And so what the left here is zero and the right is 16.5 kilobits, okay? And each of these little tiny thin gray lines you see here, that's one strand of mitochondrial DNA. It's on each pixel. And so what you're seeing is 500 of them. And the white areas, you don't worry about those. That's just areas where the PCR machine lost some segments. And so it just puts white. <clears throat> the uh, the uh, This area here, where you see these, do you see these blue bars up here? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Those are actually genes. And so these, this is the area of the DNA that is encoding specific genes that are used, specific proteins that are used. This left-hand side over here is what's called the control region. And that's, nobody quite understands exactly what it's doing, but that's where the, all the control circuitry is for that mitochondrial DNA, okay? And by the way, just so you know, pe people, some people may not know this, mitochondrial DNA are directly handed down from mother to child with no modifications whatsoever. So you actually share exactly identical mitochondrial DNA with your siblings and your cousins and second cousins and third cousins going back hundreds of years. They're very, it's very slow change in the mitochondrial DNA. And there's 26 major groups in different parts of the world, A through Z, and, you know, the Nordic countries have their own slight changes to their mitochondria compared to the Middle, the Middle East, for example. OK, and all that happened, you know, hundreds of thousands of years ago when the human race spread out. So <clears throat> what you're looking at here is all these mitochondrial uh, data. The blue dots are uh, bad sectors and the black lines are bad sectors. And you can see, this is actually my mom's mitochondria. She's now 95. And you can see that there's quite a bit of damage in her, her mitochondria. Now here's mine. And since I'm her son, I should have identical mitochondria to her. But you can see that there's nowhere near as many bad sectors. I mean, you can just, just by looking at it, you can see the difference, right? So that's the difference between a 63-year-old and 95-year-old. Here's my nephew on my sister's side. So he has exactly the same mitochondria. All came down from my mother. He has even cleaner mitochondria, although it's not perfect. And we have an algorithm that we've built uh, that's kind of an uh, it's kind of a learning uh, uh, machine learning algorithm that gives these scores. And so I my mom has 25% damage. I have 11 and he has seven. If we put that on a graph, this is what we get. Okay, and of course we had to massage this data a lot to get it get get a. It's not really straight. It actually mm -hmm. is quite um, quite curved. But <clears throat> the point is that the quality of your mitochondrial DNA is degenerating as you get older, and we think that there's a certain point where it no longer. And as that happens, that means that the mitochondria is not running properly, which means it's not generating as much energy which means that your body is just running out of juice, which is no surprise. Anybody who's in, gotten in their 70s and 80s can tell you that just the energy level just starts to plummet. You just don't have the energy you had used, so things don't work as well. Um, we think that, uh, I also wanna mention that that, it, this can, that decline can happen much faster if you don't take good care of yourselves. And that's why people put all this effort into fussing about their diet and getting enough sleep and so forth. The reason that that works is because it helps your mitochondria hang on longer. Right, and and the the lack of, I, I guess the lack of energy is not only, it's cell, at a cellular level, so it also impacts chronic diseases. Like Alzheimer's. Absolutely, absolutely. Our theory is that there's a certain threshold level below which you start, all these diseases start to pop up. And above that, you know, your cells can kind of always just push through, right? Like, you know, heart disease. Well, your 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 cells mostly when you're in your 30s and 40s, they're, they've got a lot of energy and they could just keep, 
they can keep going and they keep replicating and they can dispose of waste and they can do their jobs really well. But once they go below a certain point, it doesn't work as well. And they you start to get scar tissue and you start to get plaque buildup and all these things that begin to turn into heart disease. Same thing mm-hmm. with Alzheimer's. Okay. Right. It doesn't, yes. it doesn't mean that the mitochondria is necessarily the only cause. Mm-hmm. We consider mitochondrial energy decline to be like this background, almost like a river under underneath and everything is affected by it in either large ways or small ways. 